there is some evidence support that life, the, the reality that we see right now is a simulation. Or it could be that, which way more likely, that you're just discovering some sort of code that the entire universe is based on. That when you look at things being fractal and you look at the idea of there being not just infinite expansion but infinite contraction and that there is no smallest point. There's just smaller than we can measure. But when we talk about subatomic particles and we talk about things being like atoms being mostly air and then you go deeper and deeper and you don't know what the fuck is going on and particles are blinking in and out of existence and existing at the same time both moving and still. Ah! So empty space isn't empty. It's full of Higgs particles, if you like, or a Higgs field. Wow. So every bit, so this means this space. Now it's not just space between the galaxies, it's in this room. That every square meter of this room is full of the Higgs field. And our fundamental particles, the electrons, let's say, in our bodies, interact with that Higgs field. And in that process, they acquire mass. So it's the, it's the mass generation mechanism. It's why some particles are massive, like electrons and quarks, and some things like photons are not massive. They're massless, and they travel through the universe at the speed of light. So we got to the point where we thought, right, okay, we, we will build a machine that will either disprove or prove that theory, and the LHC is such a machine. If that theory is correct, which it now seems to be, it, the prediction is you must find the Higgs particle. Of the, of the LHC, or some kind of Higgs particle, and indeed we found it. It really is a mathematical prediction. It's like we think there's a new fundamental particle that does the job of giving mass to the other particles, and this is how it does it, and this is how it behaves, and this is what it will look like, and, and this is what it will do. And then 50 years later, you build the biggest machine ever built, 16 miles in circumference, most of it's in France, a bit of it's in Switzerland. 10,000 scientists, you, you know, 150 you countries. You, you, you accelerate protons, the nuclei of hydrogen around this thing at 99.999999% of the speed of light. They go around the 16 miles 11,000 times a second. We can collide 600 million of them together every second to recreate the conditions that were present less than a billionth of a second after the universe began. Photograph it in the biggest digital cameras ever built. The one I work on called Atlas is 40, 40 meters in diameter. Huge, vast, vast thing. 7,000 tons of digital camera in a cavern the side of St. Paul's Cathedral underneath the ground in Switzerland. And you find it. And it means that we understand physics. It means that we, that that's one of the important things about it. It means that our, our understanding of fundamental physics is, is not horribly wrong at the moment. It's, it's, it's good enough to predict something like that, God, which that is, is a remarkable achievement. That is mind-blowing. That is truly, one. truly mind-blowing. But if you look at the entire universe, then the idea of there being not just a life form like human beings, but the exact same life form is not just once, but an infinite number of times. In the universe, absolutely. In the universe. Well, I'm sure. I mean, there are 350 billion galaxies in the observable universe. So the, the, it would be, surely there are civilizations out there. And more advanced as well. But, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's the sure. case. Sure. Uh, and, and it has to be the case in an infinite universe, yeah. as you say. Uh, now, as I said, the, we've discovered thousands of planets, confirmed discoveries, and the, the statistics tell you there are billions of them out there. So virtually every star probably has a planetary system. So, so the, the statistics have gone in the favour of SETI from the astronomical perspective. But as I say, you've also got to have the time to make things like us. Uh, you know, and that, that's a torturous process. There's no inevitability to evolution. The thing is, not, it's, not a, a, it's not to be seen as some march to complexity, evolution. It's, it's, it, it, it does what it does. It, it, Single-celled organisms were very, very good at just surviving and getting on with it for, over, for most of the history of life on Earth. So it's all really just perspective when you think about it, because there's, even though there is an enormous galaxy, relatively speaking, it's one tiny it's that big. little thing in comparison to the rest of the universe. Yeah. So even if we could find something out there, the likelihood of it being as advanced as us are very small. Well, no, but it's I just mean, a matter of how far we can reach or how far we can to see. What, what people do know, I think, is that the Milky Way is probably the boundary of our aspirations. It's, and there for are, this the, generation or no, forever, beyond? I think. And forever? Two, I think so. What there if are, we live 100,000 years and people well, keep evolving? The, 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 the galaxy is 100,000 light years across. There are 200 billion star systems in it. Um, it's it's big. It's too big. <laughs> but it, it, but that that's not so. So you could just about perhaps 
conceive in the far future of beginning to spread out into the Milky Way. You could conceive of that. Um, it given hundreds of thousands of years, right? But then, if you then you go, well, where's the next galaxy? Andromeda. Right. It's two over two million light years away. So the idea that you would get across a distance of two million light years with any conceivable technology is to me probably, I mean, it takes light, a light beam to two million years. So if you want to talk to someone in Andromeda, you, it will take two, hundred, two million years to get a message out there and two million years to get it back. So there's a four million round trip. To, that's the nearest galaxy. So, so it's, it, it's big, right? So, that's the thing. But so, so, so you can imagine possibly the Milky Way, some chance if there are other civilizations there talking to them. But I think beyond that, I just cannot conceive of how it would be done. Is this relative, though, uh, in, in perspective to the single-celled organisms that existed billions of years ago in comparison to us? Do we really think that we're the end-all, be-all, and this is the, the last stop on the road to evolution? No. Isn't it possible that we get so advanced if we live to be another billion years that we can, all these ideas that we have in our head about the laws of space and time, if we continue to go we, uh, on the same path, I mean, isn't it possible that we will achieve some unfathomable level of technological proficiency or, or of control over matter or of, or of an understanding of the universe at such a deep level that we can violate all these things that we now consider laws? What, is, what do you think is going to happen with us? I'm, I'm optimistic, I think. Um, and we've got... a. a culture that allows us to be open-minded and we have democracies and all these things are very difficult to get. So I think we often miss the great things that we have in place in places like the US and Europe. Definitely really very good. And so, so it just takes a recognition of that, I, I think. And that's what, how we started again, isn't it? How do you just remind people what wonderful opportunities they have and what wonderful things there are to do? And if you just turn the reality TV off for a bit and go and read a book or something, a, a Kindle book, if you want. It doesn't have to be a real book. But then, you know, what wonderful things could we achieve? So I'm kind of optimistic there, I think. You Beautiful. Have to it. Beautiful. I, I think so. I mean, obviously, there's some real issues with culture and society. But I, I often wonder, as we talked about before, if those issues just inspire us to improve and, and change. If you, you can't have a yin without a yang. I mean, you have a bunch of shit going on that is, is like a constant ebb and flow. And I always... I always ponder whether or not that is uh, almost a mechanism for progress or a mechanism for advancement and that without it you don't get that. I don't know. It's possible. It is possible.